And let's see, we have a sub story and the main story. I wonder if there's anything else in the other town, so. Nope, of course not. I guess it just glows yellow if there is. Probably does. Guess we'll go with the sub story first then. Jahara's apartment. Five story condominium named Boy Bakte. That sits in the residential zone. Each room is designed for one or two people to live in. Jahara resides in room 301 on her own for her family reasons. To Jahara's apartment. Jahara's side. And I guess that symbol is just, well that little picture is just for which character we are. It all makes sense. And it's still one today. Fiddling with the TV remote in my hand, I've been, have been deep in an amusing mood on the so soft sofa. Why in the world does Golden Week even exist? Saturdays, Sundays, and public holidays are already a big pain in the neck for me. This annual long vacation is even worse. If every day were a weekday, I get to go to school every day. It's not like I have a thing for going to school. Actually, considering that I avoid crowds, it should be a place I'd rather stay away from. Then why do I wish I could go to school every single day? Because it's the only place where I can see a certain someone. Actually, if there were some other place where I could do the same, I wouldn't hesitate for a second to leave school right away. I look up to see the clock say it's nearly 6 p.m. Since I got home and dove into the sofa, it's been an hour and a half. My school uniform must have plenty of wrinkles by now. I know it's a change, but... <sighs> Whatever. I don't have any motivation to do anything right now. I'm too happy. This is all his fault. Sure, if my plans change, I'd be happy to. I know no one except for me would recognize that as anything special. But since I've been looking at him longer than anyone else, I'm able to realize how much it's really worth. Really is worth. In terms of relationships with others, the one I'm in love with appears to have a line set over which he doesn't let anyone cross. At least at school. I have an idea why he's like that, and I highly doubt I've misunderstood. Due to knowing about that line, I've been insistently struggling to cross it. I've lost count of how many times I failed, but I've never given up. What happened back at the school gate was a another attempt. Since last night, I've done simulations over and over again. And in every one of those, my attempt ended in failure. And the same should have happened in real life as well. I had braced myself for his refusal, by asking him for something that can't be undone. That can't be done. I was expecting a twinge of pain, and yet, some glee over the fact I got to talk to him. The short walk I took with him after school was going to be the routine I went through countless times. However, the very last few seconds were nowhere near anything in the past. I sigh again. Unlike sighs that drain your strength away from you, the ones I let out give me a warm, floaty feeling. Boy... Why no school tomorrow? What a living hell it is that I'll have to spend the day off alone with this feeling! This is exactly like when a funny movie, movie you're watching is about to come to its climax, but the next thing you see is an announcement of its sequel. I feel like I'm stuck in limbo. But then again, without Golden Wink, you wouldn't have just said that to begin with. I know I'm being contradictory, but since it comes to the heart, it comes from the heart. There's nothing you can do about it. I suppress the grim, the grin, that tries to cover my face when I let my mind drift. The long vacation is almost here, but it's lucky that I'll get to see him in two days. On the other hand, that's the only day before the break that I have a chance to talk to him. But now's not the time to worry about that. I have that promise that will make it easier to begin a conversation with him. I watched that DVD only because I assumed he would probably like it, but that effort really paid off. As always, I'm going to talk with him for as long as possible while making sure I'm not pestering him or coming across as too forceful. 
How about I set my next goal? I think I'll for formulate my strategy for that day while cooking dinner. I was supposed to stop by this a supermarket to buy some food for today. Oh well, I guess I'll go eat out tonight. It'll probably be a month since the last time. I don't really like eating out, but today I don't mind. I'm pretty sure that whatever I eat, I'll be too happy to care about how it tastes. And back to Kamiya. And nothing as usual. Probably be a while since until the other areas open up. Well, to use room. Amakawa's house. Use room. A wooden Japanese bungalow standing near the center of the residential area, where plenty of old mansions can be found. The main house and a detached building sit on the relatively large land. Ju uses one of the rooms in the detached building. And back to you side. After finishing a slightly early dinner, I get myself ready to go on my daily patrol through my district. I also have the option to take a day off to rest and recover from the fatigue and damage of last night's fight. But that can put me at greater risk in the long run. Any illness should be discovered and dealt with sooner rather than later. Most importantly, I skipped yesterday's patrol because I was completely dedicated to the case. If I skip again, then it will be two days in a row. I should avoid letting that happen. Alright. Giving a jolt to my exhausted body, I put on an outdoor jacket and head out. Walking out the entrance, I'm welcomed by the surprisingly chilly outside air. One of my main purposes for patrolling is to help my stomach digest what I eat at dinner. The variants, especially those which require immediate action, spread a distinctly strange atmosphere around them. And variants. And it's different refers to an entity that has come into the world under the influence of a naturally strong emotion. Every variant possesses surreal strength, called disobeying power, without exception. Depending on their original forms, the variants are divided into several categories, such as human variants, beast variants, and material variants. The strangeness is so apparent that even I, with my weak senses, can detect it. Because of that, I don't need to be as alert as a police officer and look out for prowlers. I have at least enough room to admire the surrounding view. In the western sky, the sunset is merging with the night, as if in the middle of the two, two paints being blended on a palette. Looking at the color of the faint orange that the sun leaves behind, as its last vestige, I descend a gentle slope extending to the station. I walk past all kinds of people on my way. A middle aged businessman in a worn out suit, a pair of bubbly high school girls chattering away. A little boy riding his bike up the slope. Figures that can be seen in this town every day. For them, no day is ever the same. But when it comes to the city itself, there's a certain thing that doesn't change. It's that most of the residents get to finish off the day at peace and start the new morning as though for granted. I like to watch boring scenery of this kind. Even if plenty of the individuals in it are bear bearing misfortune on their shoulders. It makes my day of doing what I'm supposed to do help sustain that boringness. In fact, I believe that I'm doing enough work to feel proud of myself without putting on airs. I'm not trying to show myself off as some kind of ally of justice. Actually, I have an ul ulterior motive. And that is... Ellipses. When I walk past a lady with long black hair at the bottom of the slope, I call a certain other girl, who is my untouchable symbol of everyday life. I remind myself of her running off under the blue sky. Thanks to her, I've been able to spend the day with this exhilarating feeling that I haven't had for a long time. It feels okay for me to make a wish for her. Maybe she be she's spending this very time of the day in a common peace. Magical eyes. And question mark side. Oops. Hit my desk. And 
I guess I'll just stick with my guy voice then. On summer day, I play in a hospital room with beige walls. Three years have been long, have been long enough to engrave the surrounding view into this, into the girl's memory. Then girl, then, no matter the hour or reason, regardless of the weather, the scenery never changes for her. The only people who come into this room are the girl's parents, grandmother, and hospital staff. Despite signs of rain, today she is able to walk around without her body suffering. Especially on rainy days, she feels a sickening sense of oppression she has to put up with. When she's in good shape, going shopping in the hospital shop on the first floor is her favorite thing to do. She's given a 300 yen allowance for each visit, and that is her only chance to choose what she wants of her own will. For her, these brief opportunities to free herself from her day-to-day -day boredom are far from more valuable than that small amount of money. What's even better is that today she has 1,000 yen as a reward for making it through the medical examinations that took up her entire day yesterday. She was too impatient to wait for her grandmother, the sitter, to come back from the ladies' room and ask for permission to go on ahead and take the elevator down to the first floor. She's so eager that the elevator dis descent seems to take an, an eternity. The elevator, indifferent to her impatience, rings a bell and opens its doors when it finally arrives on the designated floor. She takes off running, but unfortunately, she bumps into someone and falls down on her bottom. How? The opposite person seems to have taken a big tumble. She raises her face and finds a boy whose right arm and leg are plastered in light blue casts. There's no way that he could have kept his balance in a state like that. Feeling guilty about running into him so carelessly, she quickly reaches the decision to apologize to him. However, due to her lack of experience communicating with other people, and her panic to check if he's okay, she forgets to even get to her feet. Are you okay? Does it hurt anywhere? For a moment, she can't understand the words directed to her. Oh, that was him. She was the one who had started running recklessly, pushing over this injured boy. And yet, the boy is seemingly under, around the same age as her, just asks if she herself is fine. As she's worriedly staring at his face in silence, he grows too embarrassed and gives her a bashful smile. Is there something funny on my face? He asks her. That is the instant she made friends with someone her own age for the first time in her entire life. And side in. And to Thursday. So you're back to use room. And that's it. Still kind of want to check these areas just in case. And nothing, as usual. And let's see his room. I wouldn't. And same description. Yeah. Do use room again. And I'm sure. You sighed. The blind ringtone throws my concentration off. After finishing my late breakfast, I've been reading the novel that I bought yesterday. Apparently it's already been an hour. The phone screen displays the number and the name of the detective that I've known for years. The fact that a high schooler has been acquainted with a detective for that long may sound like there's something rough between them, but of course, he's not calling my student self. Assuring myself that I have no idea why he's calling, Press the answer button. Hello? Amakawa show now. Is this Amakawa? An unusual way to start a phone conversation. When you call someone on their mobile, you should already know their identity. It implies that what he has to say will be something nobody else should know. Yes, Amakawa speaking. Can we meet up today? You need my help for your work? Yeah. Not quite. I just want your advice about something hard to discuss over the phone. Is it urgent? Whatever time is fine if it's today. Low urgency. 
That's not something irrelevant either, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't have called you, kid. I have another engagement booked for a little before noon, but I should probably give this priority. I feel bad having to back out since we've been planning it for a while, but I'm sure they'll understand when I explain. You got it. I'll be right over. Thanks. Actually, I owe you one from the end of last year. As a matter of fact, that's what I was hoping to hear. Time and place? Usual spot in an hour, if that's good. No problem. Alright then, give me a call when you're around there. God, he hangs up so quick. This, this is kind of funny, though. It was just a joke, but one of my octopus arms is already reversed. Preserved. If this keeps up, I can easily foresee that none of them will be left for Ogawa during the break. Wait, what am I thinking? From the beginning, there was no chance I'd be able to make any time for her. Feeling stupid for being collected, I pick up the book from the floor to put it in a bookmark and snap it close. And straight to this shopping street, station shopping street, station front shopping district. The shopping district on the south side of Morizuka Station. It is slightly large for a shopping district. You can find not only basic foods and daily essentials, but ornaments and various kinds of tea and cigarettes here. To the station. And Chiharu's side. Ever since yesterday, Footage with quality so high, it could be digitally rec recorded, has been, an, been on auto repeat in my head, continuing even now as I wait for the traffic light to change. And in my mind, my own exhilaration has been generating the sounds of fireworks. Sure, if my plans change, I'd be happy to. Each time I remember that line, my heart beats faster. Last night, I sighed almost 100 times in between when I got into bed and when I fell asleep. And as that sleepless night went by, the radio said to play a tune that Amakawa might like. I quickly decided that I need to search online to get details on it. But before I knew it, I typed a series of Omakawa U in the search bar. <sighs> I really want to see him. In order to cool down my mental overheating, I've bothered to come all the way downtown, but it doesn't seem to be helping at all. I've already given up on holding back the smirks that keep appearing and biting on my face. I only need to, at least by the CD before going home. Otherwise, this outing will have been totally pointless. A silly sound brings me back into rea reality, and I notice the traffic light is now green. I set up on foot, slightly behind the other pedestrians. Even though it's the first day of vacation, this area doesn't seem any more crowded than usual. Maybe this public holiday lasting so long makes lots of people want to travel. Works for me, since I'm not a big fan of crowds, I can walk around more light-footedly like this. As I look about at random stop, my eyes catch on a sign at the entrance of an independent theater. Couples Thursday, only 2,000 yen for couples. The part that draws my attention is the word couples, not the discounted price. I can't believe I get so caught up in these little things. It's all because of that wonderful phrase Amakawa gave me. I can never get rid of my expectations and feelings that something could happen between him and me, no matter how hard I try. I might be able to spend the vacation with him. To my knowledge, he appears to avoid crowds as much as I do, or maybe even more. And that's why seeing a movie hasn't been an option for the two of us. Most people would think of those cinema complexes near the station when they want to see movies. And what's a cinema complex? First, a movie theater containing multiple screens. It's also called a multiplex or a megaplex. Sort of subscription. I'm sure he wouldn't want to go there. But what would he think about this small theater? I feel like the chance of success is pretty low, but it's not zero. Yeah, this should be worth considering. 
When it comes to him, the chances are not zero. I don't care how mentally demanding and time-consuming it is. The same logic applies to the CD. I doubt just one single CD is going to largely change anything. But, it could be a good conversation opener. And that's the only reason I've shown up down here. Someone calls out to me as I'm about to enter the shop that's my de destination. Excuse me, could I have a little, little of your time, please? I turn my eyes to the owner of the voice and find a boy standing there. Um, well, what can I do for you? I have a question to ask. The boy has a spreaded face, and a short hair saw accompanies it perfectly. I guess he's in his last year of elementary school, or maybe first year of junior high. Okay, what is it? この辺りで俺くらいの身長で髪の毛をこうやって2箇所で縛ってる女の子って見ませんでした。Have you seen a girl my height with her hair tied at two points like this? Puts his hand on his head and men became the girl's tied hair. おさげの女の子? Are you looking for a girl with twin pigtails? はい、一緒に遊びに来て気づいたらそばにいなくて Yes, I was hanging out with her, but next thing I know, I was by myself. I grasp the situation now. He's spoken to me to see if I know anything about his companion. Since the boy's wearing a very serious look on his face, he must have gotten lost. どうですか? Have you seen anyone like her? A girl with twin tails. I might have seen someone like that, but I can't remember where. To begin with, it's highly improbable that someone who just arrived in downtown, like me, encountered her. Oh. I suddenly have a flashback of two swinging pigtails. And that was when I... もしかして見かけました? Do you remember something? うん。多分だけど、映画館のそばで見た気がする. Yeah, I think I saw her around a movie theater. 映画館って、そこをまっすぐ行ったところのですよね? A movie theater? You mean the one at the end of the street? So, That's right. He should have been somewhere near the theater. I can't say for sure, but I was busy thinking about stuff, especially Amakawa. If you can tell me more about her, then I can picture her more, more clearly. Yeah, <laughs> No, I think I told you enough. Theater sounds about right. He now appears to be extremely restless, so tell me to let him go, so I can get to her as quick as possible. He seems to be assured by my input of a movie theater. Thank you very much for your help. My pleasure. And my apologies for suddenly holding you back here. With a small bow, he dashes off. He immediately turns into a small dot, which proves how desperate he is to find her. They were in the middle of a date, I guess. Children like him are too young to really date, but the way he was struggling for his girlfriend gives me an idea. I imagine the two of them walking down the streets alongside each other. Yeah, that seems right. Him talking to her in that mature way he did earlier, and her answering eyes with a nod, while having fun with that silly little mental exercise of mine, and feeling a sense of envy, I turn around to face the shop's entrance again.